Hello there everyone and welcome back to my second video on this visual novel Lucy the Eternity She Wished For. Now I'm not gonna get into detail on the who and the why and everything else regarding this pet project of mine because I kinda explained it in my uh, previous video. So feel free to check the first video in this playlist if you wanna know what's going on. As for today though, we're gonna get right back into the action. So just like a little reminder, last time our main protagonist found a girl android in the scrap heap basically and he brought her home. And uh, now we're gonna continue learning what's going on. I'm also gonna quickly lower the volume a bit. Because last time I felt the, the music was a bit too loud. But if you think one way or the other, the people who are actually watching and listening to this, do feel free to let me know. I'm. It's a bit tricky to find a balance between my voice and the the game sounds. Anyway, now we can get back right to it. I've endured this far with just one goal in mind. There hasn't been a single day where I could rest. It's become natural to go to bed at the crack of dawn. I don't recall the last time I've been home. Thinking back, it's been quite a long while. Fifteen years. By the way, this is not the main character. This is a set of flashback-esque segments, which are gonna happen throughout the game. But don't worry, they actually do make sense at the end. 15 years. 15 years have passed since I started this project. But the end is near. 15 years of hard work and determination. After all this time, the fruits of my labor may finally be realized. How long have I yearned for this day? I've almost given up on I've almost given up on you many times. But I've persevered and finally succeeded. I barely managed to hold back the tears. I remind myself that it's still too early to celebrate. I must restrain my exuberance. I'm teetering on the brink of complete exhaustion. I've been pushed physically and mentally to my limit. I've become a shell of my former self. The last 15 years have taken a huge toll on me. I cannot wait any longer. That is why... That is why... Please, please open your eyes. Lucy Valentine I'm not gonna read these again because we're gonna see the three laws of robotics several times throughout this game, like 10 times or more. And I've narrated them in the first episode, so... And you know them already, anyone anyone who's fame... Uh, anyone who's acquainted with Isaac Asimov knows the three laws of robotics anyway. October 13th, you. Tap. I shut off the alarm by reflex. I groggily get up to check the time. Dots. The clock reads 6.30 a.m. School starts at 8 sharp. It takes 30 minutes to get there. So I got about an hour. I'm bad at math, but one extra hour. Dots. There's plenty of time left, and I'm still feeling tired. Closing my eyes, I lie back down. I decide to catch some more Z's. Many more dots. And now he's late. 
After a brief moment, I get back up. I realize that I'd been forgetting something. You think? Come to think of it, wasn't there a... I look around for the android. And there it was. Dressed in provocative clothing. That's not provocative, dude. That's... That's PG-13 all day long. With a tall nose, luscious lips, and hair glinting in silver. The android named Lucy came into my view. Lucy. As I call out to her, I'm greeted by an immediate reaction. It seems to be revving itself up. It mutters something and starts to rise off the floor. Hmm. A robot that looks no different to those of a real person. With looks, sorry. Also with a pretty face to boot. Um, don't get the wrong idea. Yeah, he knows what we're thinking. Just because it's attractive doesn't mean I'm interested. Since it's a robot. In other words, it's like checking out a girl from a magazine. I, I bet he knows a lot about that. Except that feeling is amplified tenfold in this case, because she is not in a magazine, obviously. Although technology is improving, a huge gap remains between humans and robots. You can't approach a person like you would a robot. No matter how close a robot could simulate a human being. Machine and man will always be different. As I continue staring at the android, I think to myself, what kind of greeting should I use? What kind of greeting should I be using here? Good morning. Did you sleep well? They all fell out of place. They all feel out of place, sorry. I decide to ask about their condition instead. How are your battery levels? 100% fully charged. No issues have been recorded. Good to know. I let out a yawn as I make my way over to the bathroom. Finishing up, finishing up my morning ablutions, I dry myself up with a towel as I head downstairs. Yeah, sorry, I still think the music might be a little too loud. Entering the living room, I spot a couple of plain sandwiches on the table. Dots. Grabbing one, I start munching down. More dots. It's always the same sandwich from the convenience store just across the street. While chewing, I glance around the living room. My father has already left for work. He always leaves early and returns late at night. Actually, he typically spends the entire night at work. That's how it is around here. That's how it is around here. Seems there's like a weird limit where there's music that's a bit loud and there's no music at all. I head back to my room. The android is waiting for me in the exact same spot. Looks like it hadn't budged an inch. As expected from a robot. Putting that aside, I start to prepare for school. While packing my bag, I start to wonder if the robot has any magical self-regenerating abilities, because it clearly looks like a Necron. How do you feel, now that you're fully charged, are you able to walk? Its head slowly turns to face me. Significant damage in the lower limbs. Unable to carry out normal operation.
Repairs are required. Keep things simple, remember? Walking is not feasible in current state. Still? Well, nothing changed, dude. You didn't fix anything. Aren't you a real pain? Anyway, I understand. I'm not even going to make the attempt to fix it myself, because I suck. I'm... Uh, I'm way out of my depth here. I'll see what happens once I take it to the repair shop. Just about finished packing. Only thing left is the Android itself. So, how am I gonna lug this thing? Yeah, because clearly a, a, a human person sized Android is gonna fit, fit in his backpack. Sounds good, except it's stupid. Come on, get in there. It's too big to fit inside my backpack. No shit. What was I expecting? I should try to use my brain next time. Guess there's no other choice. I kneel down facing away from the robot. Alright, hop onto my back. Dots. It tilts its head to the side looking confused. After noticing that, I start to get a little ir I start to get a little irritated. Top of the line, yeah right. Top of the line 20 years ago, am I right? Am I supposed to explain every little thing? Listen up. Put your arms around my neck and climb onto my back. Can you do that? It follows my instructions to the letter. Confirming request. Is this correct? Ah! It's, she is strangling him, by the way. Stop! I surrender! The strangling grip loosens. I collapse to my knees in a coughing fit. I think I nearly blacked out out there. I think I nearly blacked out there. Are you trying to murder me? There's no need to put that much force into there's no need to put that much force into it. Just do it enough not to fall off. Honest to god, I thought I was a goner. That thing's got a steel vice chokehold. This android should look for a world wrestling champion. Should look to be. Okay, let's try that again. Second time's the charm. Rising off the floor, I brace myself for the extra weight. Huh? But lo and behold, it was deceptively light. Think I'm coming around to appreciating this first class product. And lift off. The weather's not too bad. The brisk autumn breeze is cool against my skin. I gladly inhale the crisp morning air, letting last night's stress melt away. The streets are still quiet, which is good. The less there are to see this, the better. Especially with what I'm lugging on my back. Let's see there. Here. Where's the repair shop? If memory serves, it should be about 15 minutes away. Which is a relief. As I'm not really what you'd call a fit guy. Nerd. Not certain I can schlep this thing much longer. And now this robot's fidgeting. Hold on tighter so you don't fall off. It feels like I'm scolding a child. Hey, stop moving around so much. 
Ah. I could feel the android through my clothes. Its texture feels surprisingly similar to a human's. It, I'd noticed it yesterday, yet it manages to surprise me again today. And that's not the only thing. It's warm to the touch. It feels as if I'm carrying a real person. Probably just its heating system. That would explain it. Wow, feels just like a real person. I mutter to myself absent-mindedly. The thermometer is operating as normal. Say what? A thermometer allows Lucy to simulate human temperatures. Uh, good to know. Motherboards and microprocessors consisting of various computer chips. There must be thousands of those inside a single Android. The heat emanating, the heat emanating from the machine. It's warm as human skin. It feels just like us. But it's not a real person. You damn bigot. Just an elaborate fake. Sometimes I fear what progress in technology would bring to the future. Do you know where we're headed? With a whir, the robot shakes its head sideways. We're going to a place that will fix you up. When they begin the repairs, you need to be still and quiet. So they won't be distracted. Do you understand? Dots. Hey, I'm asking if you understood. Say something. Something. Maybe it took my command literally. I just hope it got a message. Letting out a frustrated sigh, I resume walking. I'll be about time for my classmates to head in. No, it'll be about time for my classmates to head in. I begin to hurry so as to avoid running into anyone that might recognize me. And I'm gonna take this second to get a sip of water. I arrive at the place in an aching and huffing mess. Sure has the look of a small antique shop, although mostly dealing in second-hand goods. They do dabble in robot repairs. Word is there's even a fixer who likes robotics. And that is half-decent. Normally I wouldn't be caught in a place like this if I were dead. But these are unusual circumstances. Well, here we are. What? A customer already? Hold on a second, lad. <clears throat> Sorry. Hold on a second. Talk about a grumpy demeanor. After a while, a man emerges from the back, scratching his head. And judging from that none too pleasant expression, I am pretty sure the guy's not an early riser. Stifling a yawn, he asks, So, what can I do for you this early in the morning? Unable to move my arms, I gesture at the android draped over my back with my chin. Can you fix this? Is... is that an android? No. It's a giraffe. Wiping his tired eyes, he gazes intently at the robot. Ah, uh, let me see here. Huh. I don't think I've ever seen this model before. I spot a glint of curiosity in those sleepy, half-closed eyes of his. He walks over to take a closer look. Huh. 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 I'm running out of ways to do hum. Well, I'm stumped. I can't make out the model. 
It's written on her belly, dingus. It's probably some obscure model from an unknown company, or it's never actually been released to the public. Where'd you get this, kid? Well... How should I play this? He might call the cops on me. And as what I did was clearly illegal. So? What should I say? Yes, Inquisitor, this guy right here. Dabbling in abominable intelligences. Yeah, mm, so I obviously do know the correct options to get to the good end, which is why I'm, I'm just gonna go right away on those. So the good option here is to tell him the truth, obviously. I found it in the junkyard. Junkyard? You don't mean that company's junkyard. You stole from the Adeptus Mechanicus? He tosses the thumb over his shoulder. I'm not exactly sure where he's referring to. But I haven't seen any other junkyards around here, so... Yes, that's probably the one. You got some guts, kid, stealing from the Mechanicus. I hope you know how much the fines are. Fines? They turn into a servitor. I know that anything in the world is free as long as you don't get caught. Well, that's actually a nice philosophy. Ha ah, ha You're a funny one, kid. I like that. Well, I guess he is cool with it. Because he probably has like a dozen other stolen androids in the back. Wait a minute, what's this? A nasty frown forms on his face. Is something wrong? Yeah, you could say that. Suddenly he starts fussing around like a little kid. What kind of sicko would do this? Just look at it, the entire frame's ruined. It won't even be able to move around properly on its own. He was right. Pretty savvy of him to point that out. I guess he is the real deal after all. So, you think you can fix it? That's not the main issue here. There's something more important. And what's that? Do you have the resolve to take proper care of an android? The resolve? Where did this come from? Listen... Androids break easily. They're fragile. They're sensitive. They're delicate. Okay, they're... Romeo? Do you get what I'm saying here? He emphasizes the point three times. That's how passionate he was about it. I can see that he really loves his robots. But at the same time, he's starting to freak me out. He continues ranting. To a lot of people, androids are nothing more than fancy toys nowadays. I mean, those kinds of folks pay for my food and my bills. But whenever I hear about how they've been mistreating their androids, I tend to lose my temper. Happy, Ferris Manus noises in the background. They don't understand how important these creatures really are to us. I unwittingly take a small step back, to get away from this lunatic. Creatures. This man referred to androids as creatures. He is not right in the head. I should call the police on him. From time to time, there have been people who fall in love with androids. Not just carnal desire, I'm talking about people who are willing to spend the rest of their lives with androids, treating them as equals. Because Emperor forbid we treat intelligent AI as equals. It's a controversial topic that's getting more discussion. 
It's an abnormality spawning from an advancing civilization with constant innovations in technology. As someone who's never seen it happen firsthand, I've always refused to believe it. I can't believe that such people actually exist. An android simply lacks the intellect to be paired up with a human being. It's nothing but a glorified hunk of metal that can make our lives a little bit easier. I'd rather spend my entire life with a monkey. Oh. No comment there. I'm also gonna take a moment to sip some more water. At least monkeys are actual living creatures. Yeah, I heard they're great bedmates too. And they share many of similarities with humans. This is my first hand experience with such a case. And I feel more disappointed than shocked. What did you expect him to have like did you expect him to have like a collection of sex bots? He seemed perfectly normal. Yes, you can't judge a book by its cover, says the bigot. I'll get it fixed, but you better treat it right. Got it? Really? I'm not the one who banged it up in the first place. Even so, I don't feel it's worth starting an argument over. Let's just get this over with. Yeah, Crystal. Yeah. What a great kid. At least you listen when somebody tells you something. Yeah, because you've known me for all of two minutes. Since we're all chummy now, how about lowering your price? Ha! Don't push your luck, kid. He pulls a giant hammer from somewhere. That was a full 180. So much for our budding friendship. Oh no, we've lost our best friend. You know what? Fine then. Half price, since you're my first customer of the day. I'm relieved to hear that. Any discounts are most certainly welcome. Great. Oh, sorry. Great. Can you have it ready by the end of school? And how is he supposed to know when's the end of school though? It's a pretty light day, so... Yeah, it's doable. He punches some numbers into the calculator. Then he shows me the results. I was planning on charging you only about this much. What do you think? It's only two million dollars. Dots. I blank out for a bit. There are a lot of video games that I've always wanted to buy, and now I won't be able to. I also needed to save up for a few textbooks that I'll be using next year. This robot had better pay for itself, and it better be better than Baldur's Gate 3. Fine, I'll pay you when I come back. Holding out my treasured pocket watch, I glance at the time. I've wasted way too much time here. An outdated gear clocker in this day and age? I like it. Has a nostalgic charm. I'm well aware that these types of watches are difficult to find. But more importantly, this is a sorry, but more importantly, this is my personal way of rebelling against this continuously developing society. Next thing he's gonna pull out a monocle. Hey, you piece of junk. Dude, you literally promised him you'd be nice to her. Can't you hear me? I guess not. No response. I finally decide to address it by name. Lucy. The robot immediately reacts. What's with this thing? I'll be back after school. Behave yourself, alright? Dots. 
the android wobbles its head back and forth. I'm hoping that it understood me. And with that, I leave the shop. I hightail it towards my high school. I'm in second year. While running, a movie that I saw recently springs to mind. It's Blade Runner 2049. An old sci-fi flick set in the year 2050. Well, I was only a year off. All these oldies seem to be lacking in one thing. Creativity. A few showcase large-scale space battles. Others would have flying vehicles soaring in the sky. Well, guess what? It's 2050. And we don't have moon-sized starships or flying cars zipping around. People still walk to school. People still drive normal vehicles. People still ride bicycles and skateboards. Some people use old fountain pens or pocket watches like me because they want to be hipsters. But there exists a single piece of technology that's become more proficient in our lives. Androids. They're being used everywhere around the world. That's one thing these age films got right. The morning bells snaps me from my reverie. Snap, I guess, because it's plural. And I dash straight to my classroom. And I dash straight to my classroom. Please refrain from running in the hallways. A janitor android scolds me as I rush past it. This type has facial recognition software to, to report any transgressor. Like me. Except I simply cover my face. And there's no record. You gotta know how to exploit the system. Says the guy stealing from junkyards. Safe! Bolstered by my recent victory, I strut towards my desk with a confident swagger. I notice that the teacher is not in yet. I plug down in my seat while still huffing. That was pretty close. Did you sleep in again? That concern-filled voice is coming from the guy sitting next to me. This guy's actually one of the few, let's call them, main characters of the game, so I thought I would give him a unique voice. A clever looking fellow. People usually refer to him by his nickname, Dr. Gears. That's because he's a real geek with a burning passion for robots. I, on the other hand, despise robots, even though I pay to get one fixed right now. And while I'd label myself an introvert, he is very approachable and outgoing. Moreover, our tastes and hobbies differ quite a lot. The music is getting a bit loud again. Moreover, our tastes and hobbies differ quite a lot. You'd think we'd have nothing to do with each other. But, as they say, opposites attract. I know, weird, right? No, I just had some business to take care of. I just had some business to take care of. Really? This early in the morning? Uh, it's a long story. I'm cut short. By a middle-aged man making his entry. Our teacher, our lord and master. A female assistant android trails behind. Uh, let's talk about this later. I send him a signal. He returns a thumbs up. Lunchtime rolls by. I take out my freshly bought pieces of bread, because I can't afford any other kind of food. 
Dr. Gears does likewise with a very appealing lunchbox. Two desks have been joined together. On mine, there's a couple of pieces of fried croquettes with a carton of chocolate milk. My friend, on the other hand, has quite a tasty spread on his, which he seems to be enjoying immensely as he looks as he's looking at me as I watch it yearningly. I've heard that this I've heard that his maid android makes it for him every morning. And the food doesn't look half baked either. Huh. Maybe androids are good for something, you'd think. Then again, anything looks better to a poor schmuck like me who eats bread every day. Problem with your food, or... Never mind. I'm poor and can't afford any food outside of bread. Problem indeed. I bite down on the croquette. Huh? Delicately piercing its golden, crisply warm surface, a savory scent wafts forth. The sweet flavor of the dough mingles with the tantalizing aroma, creating a heavenly mixture. But that's not all. The creme, or cream I guess, inside, unleashes its softness as it slowly melts upon my tongue. For the vegetables in the mixture provide a strong, rich flavor. The egg and the mashed potatoes join the fray by pleasantly blending in with the other ingredients. And now I'm hungry too. This, this refined taste. It must be... McDonald's. Had you going there, didn't I? Setting aside the sad excuse for a rubber substitute, I pose a question to Dr. Gears. By the way, didn't you once tell me that you have a lot of androids at home? Huh? Yeah, around six, I think. That's a high number. A typical household can't afford that many. Well, that's because he's rich and you're poor. Rumors that Gears is from a well-to-do family, unlike me. Why the sudden interest? Uh, it's nothing. Uh, wait a minute. He starts grinning like an idiot. Hey, your food's falling from your mouth, you know. You've taken a liking to androids, haven't you? So, you're calling off this little war of ours. More like a temporary truce. Good enough. Androids are simply amazing, you know. They're truly the greatest. They're truly the greatest invention that science has delivered since the beginning of. Sorry, the greatest invention that science has delivered since the beginning of mankind. Except, you know, sliced bread. There's quite a few types. My favorite are the maid models. You freaking pervert. They take care of all the chores and really know how to cook. On top of that, the female ones are pretty cute. You'd know, nerd. Sometimes I find myself admiring their beauty. Yeah, I bet you do more than that. You've got one sick, twisted mind, Gears. Don't you know that people can achieve inner peace with beauty? It's been proven by science, you know. I shake my head warily. I do admire his enthusiasm over something so petty, really. Look, it's what's on the inside that counts. What are you talking about? Appearance don't matter. It's still a crummy, stupid robot. Here's an example using people. And I'm gonna take my example and get some water, because you can probably hear my throat is kinda dying. Let's say there's a person with a pretty face, but he's a man. 
because men can obviously not be handsome. Does the fact that he's got a woman's face change anything? No, he's ultimately a man. Likewise, even if I see a beautiful android, since it is ultimately a robot, its aesthetics don't matter anymore. So you'd rather have an android looking like uh, Jason Voorhees, I guess. It just becomes an illusion. What I'm trying to say is that even if a robot acts like a person, it's not. Therefore, all the robots are the same to me and I dislike all of them, even though I just paid to have one fixed. I guess you still haven't changed your mind. But there's got to be a reason why you brought it up, right? Normally you wouldn't even talk about it. Well, yeah. If you're looking to buy one, I'm here for you, man. I'll make sure to fill you in on all that you need to know. I'm telling you, you'll be making the greatest purchase of your life. In response, I rub my cheeks in embarrassment. Uh, I'm not exactly looking to buy one. Could it be that you're worried about the price, my friend? Because, you know, you're f freaking poor. Don't worry. I have some connections that'll let you get one. I have some connections that'll let you have one dirt cheap. Well, I already have one. I already have one that's free. As long as I'm with you, there won't be any problems. No, it's not that. There's no need to buy one. Now, just what do you mean by that? Fidgeting awkwardly, I wonder if I should tell him anything. Or everything, I guess. I found one somewhere. Found what? A giraffe. An android. You found an android? Yeah. Where? The moon. At the junkyard. Holy, you lucky bastard. Is it something like an IDX 358? Or, fi or 455? What model is it? I must know. Something that starts with a P. I can't remember. Someone told me it's a pretty recent model, but I haven't seen anything impressive yet. Might as well give it some time though, it was free after all. Huh, now you've made me curious. I'll be sure to pay you a visit soon, and I'll bring the Inquisition. He pauses a moment before continuing, as if trying to change the subject. Well, I'm certainly happy that you've taken an interest in androids, but... But what? But you should be careful. About what? You've seen them on TV, right? People who are obsessed with androids. They say it gets really tough to deal with as time goes on. Robots are robots. Humans are humans. You should never forget this boundary between them. Robots are mere tools designed to make our lives easier. Nothing more, nothing less. Me being struck... Sorry. Me being struck by lightning is more likely... Fall in love with a robot? That's just crazy. It's not like we can have an entire story just about that, right? I know, I know. Of course, I don't expect that to happen to you, of all people, you freaking bigot. But, you know, better safe than sorry. Better safe than sorry. Alright already, I'll keep it in mind. He nods in response. And 
I think we're gonna end the episode here. Or will we? I wanted to wait until the end of the school section. But yeah, I, I think we're gonna call it uh, an episode here. Uh, well, thank you very much everyone who watched or even just listened. I'm sorry again for the quality of my voice. As I've said earlier, I actually record these in the evening where my voice is not exactly in tip-top shape. Anyway, this has been the second episode of this visual novel. I think it might have ended up being a bit longer than I intended. But uh, that's all for the good. I, I will try to separate these at intervals that make sense. Either way, thanks a lot for watching and uh, I will see you next time.